another answer to the question that was asked because it was a multiple part question this uh, subscriber here says that um, what about at idle the vehicle surging what could be causing the surging concern well we're gonna go over a number of scenarios here let me start by uh, let's just let's just start talking about the scenarios behind me in the video here you're gonna see some notes that I wrote down it's for me to stay on track one of the first things that um, I will typically check is I'll make sure that idle air control is functioning normal. A lot of people will have an idle air control issue and they could mistake it and really it's a TPS issue, throttle position sensor. I've had that happen before. Now I had a guy come in with a Dodge Ram where he installed a idle air control and I simply have a Dodge so I know what works for my truck. I put an idle air control in my Dodge. Now the sensor, simple, easy to fix. Key on, wait 15 seconds, key back off, key back on, took a short trip, took multiple short trips of normal driving. And within like 50 miles, the vehicle relearned that idle air control. Now there's a way that you can force it into it, but I knew that just normal driving, it would relearn itself. And that's exactly what happened. Now, every idle air control is not gonna function that way. Uh, you have to look at the manufacturer specific reset but an idle air control go going bad at idle will cause it to surge up and down up and down sometimes even die now a throttle position sensor can do the same thing i've seen people install throttle position sensors and they just think that they put them on the vehicle and that's it sometimes codes need to be cleared because it has old um basically running tables that need to be cleared out uh, i've also seen uh people install throttle position sensors and think they just get in and go in some cases you can some cases you have to key on and then slowly ease into the throttle until it's wide open hold it in the wide open position key off wait about 10 15 seconds key back on and it's done a full sweep the vehicle has relearned a sweep from 0 to 100 or what you would call 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts or 0 volts to 5 volts or on a caterpillar 0 volts to 8 volts uh, 8 volt reference on a caterpillar and now they have dual resistance uh, throttle position sensors that as you ease into it you'll get a uh, you'll get two different readings coming back from the potentiometer one will be going positive one will be, well, one will be going negative and if it's missing either one of those inputs it can cause some erratic um, engine shutdown surging things like this there's a number of things that can happen now what did I put here alternator if you got a voltage regulator that's going bad in an alternator or if you have an alternator that's malfunctioning it can cause that surge at idle there's an issue with uh, what did I have? It was like a 2005, I think it was like a 2005 Ford 500. Came into the shop. I ordered a new alternator for it. Charge light was on. It was not putting out enough voltage. And then sometimes it was putting out too much voltage and it was causing a vehicle to surge a little bit. The regulator was going bad in the alternator. So I ordered a new alternator. It showed up, Ford one, expensive. And the charge light stayed on. And it was kind of running erratic, kind of surging a little bit. Well, I got on hotline, and I messaged Ford, and I said, look, we ordered a Ford alternator. And I'm working on a 2005 Ford 500. This was like a three-day process, five alternators later. No, six alternators later. And finally, on the sixth Ford alternator, I gave up and went and got a AutoZone Gold lifetime warranty alternator. That fixed the problem. I didn't know that there was a slew of problems like 04, 05, 06 with Ford alternators that had bad regulators and there were still a lot of them out there. Literally, they sent me Ford alternators and then they sent me a Denso alternator and then they had me change the pigtail and rewire it for the for a Denso alternator. Nothing was working that was coming from Ford. I went down and got an AutoZone one, fixed the problem right at 14.2 14 volts, charge light went away. No more surging, no more nothing. 
I've heard horror stories in the mid 2000s from other technicians in the field of Ford that went through, you know, eight, nine, ten alternators before finally getting one that was, that had an updated regulator in it that literally was functioning like it should. So that was an issue in the past too. Now, aftermarket parts, uh, there's a lot of people that install aftermarket parts because they think they're cool and they're crap. They cause all kinds of malfunctioning issues with the vehicle. Um, I had a buddy that installed a bunch of aftermarket stuff, didn't program the computer correctly, and it was causing the surging that was going on because it couldn't read the air fuel density correctly or air the air density coming into the intake manifold because of aftermarket parts, and it was causing the surging that was going on. We put the stock stuff back on it, and all of a sudden it stopped because it literally needed to be programmed for the aftermarket cold air intake and stuff that he had on there, and it was causing the vehicle to run completely wacky at idle. Sound systems. I have a friend that came into the shop now. Uh, he's on this channel sometimes. Maybe he'll pop up. Maybe he'll pop up and, and tell you about it. Maybe. Uh, his name's Ivan. He, he popped in with his Honda Civic, and he's got this big old sound system and stuff in there, and he's just got a... I don't know if it's like a, I think it's like a 97, 98 Honda Civic. He's got these big old giant subs, no capacitor in the car, no nothing. And he's just running this high powered sound system off this little small Honda Civic alternator. And while he's sitting there playing his music and stuff and he's got a little bump going on, not too much. It was, the alternator would constantly surge up and down, up and down, up and down the whole entire time because his sound system was not set up correctly. For one, he didn't have the alternator to supply enough power for that he should have had a capacitor in 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 a series with it to end up having that extra energy stored to run that sound system but he didn't eventually ended up taking out the alternator and then with a the new one decided to run it the same way same thing was happening no capacitor and he's been running that way for about six months now surging at idle so there's a number of things vacuum leaks depending on the, the type of vacuum leak it's not going to just be uh, the elbow on the back of the Dodge Rams that come off of the throttle body down into the intake manifold, they get little cracks in them. And sometimes they'll seal up if you're not on a real heavy load. And then when you snap off real heavy load and go back and then all that vacuum comes back, you will get that, that suction uh, just really increases kind of hard. And it'll collapse that, that elbow enough to where it'll the, the part that's cracked will pop in and it'll hang in for a while before it sits there and rests and works its way back out. And you'll get that surging and stuff at times associated with other codes too, like lean codes, rich codes, whatever it may be, depending on the drive cycle event or what you're dealing with. So there's a number of things that can be uh, related to your vehicle surging at idle. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Um, if there's any specifics in general that you want me to pinpoint, uh, what I would suggest doing first before anything is going and getting your charging system tested first before anything and if there are no codes active in the computer, like you said, um, I would definitely look at the charging system first. That would be the first thing that I have actually load tested, check the battery, check the alternator, really, really test that out before moving forward. Thank you.